Assalamualaikum, everyone. Basically, yeah. Basically. That's it. All right, so uh, I'm Evan, if you guys don't know. And my speech is on uh, happiness. And the uh, reason I want to talk about this is mainly because it's very important, like very important to submitters, uh, to all of us. We all need happiness, and it's, it belongs to a good soul, which is us, I'm sure. So before we can talk about anything else, we need to know what really happiness is. So what I think happiness is, so basically the majority of people think that money can buy happiness, that money is like luxury and cars, money, you know, but it's not true, obviously, but real happiness comes from God. Only God can give it to you, of course, Marshall. only if you deserve it. Unfortunately for the disbelievers, they can never experience happiness because happiness is from soul growth and nourishment. Uh, the bigger the soul, the happier you are. So I uh, have some evidence to back that up. This is from Appendix 15, just a chunk of it at the end. Happiness depends totally on the degree of growth and development attained by the soul, the real person. The Quran provides a detailed map towards perfect happiness for both body and soul both in this world and the hereafter. And, yeah. So, up to a new point. I'm um, going to start with a verse 13, 29. Those who believe and lead a righteous life have deserved happiness and joyous destiny. So, if you lead a righteous life, hopefully we all are, mashallah, if you're, if you're not happy, if you're feeling sick, ill, you know you're doing something wrong, obviously. And then you're not happy. If you're sick, you're obviously not happy. So, we need to really fix that and, you know, ask God for help and hopefully, inshallah, that will be fixed. Happiness is very important. Like, this is something I really wanted to talk about. Happiness is more important than most of us realize. Like, happiness is a quality of submitters and that we should all have, like I said at the beginning. If you're not happy, you're not leading a righteous life. Leading a righteous life means you're happy, basically. You need to ask yourself what you're doing wrong and fix it if we're not happy. Yeah. Happiness is, oh, I just read that, sorry. Heaven incredibly beautiful. You have no idea how much joy and happiness are awaiting for you as a reward for your righteous work. So that's kind of going on to, oh, I completely forgot to change this. Happiness in this earth and the hereafter. So I think, uh, no, I know. Uh, happiness is a quality of submitters, like I said again and again. We can attain happiness now, here, in this, in this world, and the hereafter. Uh, I uh, found a footnote of 1062. Most people think that they have to wait until the day of resurrection before they receive their rewards for righteousness or the retribution for wickedness. But the Quran repeatedly assures the believers that they are granted perfect happiness here and in the hereafter. Now and forever. At the end of their end, at the end of their interim, they go directly to paradise. See Appendix 17. So, yeah. Anyone who works righteous, male or female, while believing will surely grant, we will surely grant them a happy life in this world. And we will surely pay them for full recompense on this day of judgment for their righteous works. So, if we're righteous, like happy, God promises, promises us perfect health, wealth, peace, and happiness. Um, and God never breaks his promises. As for those, oh, sorry, 30, 39, 20. As for those who reverence their Lord, they will have mansions upon mansions constructed for, the, constructed for them with flung streams. This is God's promise, and God never breaks his promises. God's kingdom. When you're in God's kingdom, oh, I already said that point, but I'll just say it again. When you're in God's kingdom, you will never feel sick or ill. You will have perfect health, wealth, peace, and happiness. In God's kingdom, no one can hurt you in any way, especially Satan. Satan's a crybaby, we all know, and he wants, he's, he knows he's going to hell, and he's trying to bring us down with him. He's trying to make us ha unhappy and miserable, but he will look for any excuse to claim you. He will look in every direction to try and make you miserable. So if you're happy, you're in God's kingdom, and then you're protected. Uh, 
I will come to them from before them and from behind them and from their left and from their right, and you will find that most of them are unappreciative. But we as submitters really need to watch out for Satan and make sure we check ourselves every day. Like for fire fair, we repent, you know, that's a good way to uh, repent for everything. Rearranging our priorities. This life of this world is no more than illusion. Wait, oh, I keep forgetting to change it. Yeah. So I already read 717. Uh, this life, the life of this world is no more than an illusion and vent vanity. While the abode of hereafter is far better for the righteous, do you not understand? This worldly life is no more than vanity and play, while the abode of the hereafter is the real life, if we only knew. <clears throat> Whoops, too late. Basically, it's too late for these people that if they were to repent at like the last second, and they're, it's too late for them. Oh, I keep forgetting to change it. All right, thanks, Mom. Man. All right, anyone who chooses this fleeting life as his priority, we will rush to him what we decided to give him. Then we commit him to Gehenna, where he suffers forever, despised, despised and defeated. So this is our last chance in this life. And you'll see why this is related to happiness. This is our last chance in this life in the day of resurrection. The only thing that can give, the only thing that can save us depends on how we did in this life. So if we're happy in this life for forever, uh, which hopefully we are, um, that's great. We'll go back to heaven, of course. But if we didn't, then there's a problem because you're most likely going to go to hell, of course, if you're bad. If you had a world full of gold, diamonds even, you can't trade that in to save ourselves in the day of resurrection. Think of a world, uh, world of diamonds right now. We, we, to us, that's a lot. That's a, like, like a lot. Um, so if you were to trade that in for the day of resurrection, it's nothing. Like I can pick up a piece of trash and just say, this is like as in for if you had a, di if you had a world full of diamond for, to trade in for, to save yourself in the day of resurrection. It's nothing, just like a piece of trash if I were to pick that up, it's, it's nothing. On the day of resurrection, when they all stand before God, the followers will say to the leaders, we used to follow you. Can you spare us a, even a little bit of God's retribution? They will say, had God guided us, we would, we would have guided you. Now it is too late. Whether we grieve or resort to patience, there is no exit for us. So ask yourself, would you rather be happy or miserable? Obvious question, right? So it's very important we make the correct decision and that it is always to choose God in everything we do. So, not done yet. Virginity. Yeah, this has a lot to do with uh, being happy because let's say we're not physiologically mature, us kids right now, and if we were to break our virginity, well then we're no mentally or emotionally ready. And breaking your chest is gonna cause you to be unhappy as said in Appendix 34. From Appendix 34. Sons and daughters of the true believers must be taught that their happiness throughout their lives depends on following God's laws and preserving their chastity. This means that they must keep themselves for their spouses only and never allowing anyone else to touch them in a sexual manner. All right, drugs and alcohol. Now, this is a brutal way. Oh, thank you again. This is a brutal way to destroy your happiness. Drugs covers the minds. It, we can't control what we do if we were to uh, take drugs. Intoxicants and gambling prohibited. Oh, you who believe. Intoxicants and gambling and the altars of idols and the games of chance are abominations of the devil. You shall avoid them that you may succeed. So you can't succeed if you were to take these drugs because then you're not happy at all. We, we don't know what we're doing when we're, uh, when our mind is covered, of course. Perfect happiness now and forever. I'm just going to end with this. One of the most exclusive objects of every human being, objectives, sorry, of every human being is happiness. The Quran reveals the secret of attaining perfect happiness in this life and forever. We learn that the Quran, that we learn in the Quran, from the Quran that happiness is an exclusive, an exclusive quality of the soul. Thus a body that attains all the material successes it longs for. Money, power, fame, etc often belongs to an unhappy person. 
Happiness depends totally on the degree of growth and soul attained by the degree of growth and development attained by the soul, the real person. The Quran uh, provides a detailed map towards perfect happiness for both body and soul, both in this world and the hereafter. So, in my own words, the conclusion is stay happy, everyone, because if you're not happy, what are you, really? You're unhappy. So, stay happy, and the end. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Any questions for Evan? Back there, his brother Ben. Of course. <laughs> Man. I'm giving them off. All right. <laughs> what makes you happier? Happy? Happier. Wait for the question. A Minecraft server full of diamonds or Fortnite? <laughs> Minecraft or Fortnite? Yeah. Uh, I don't play Minecraft anymore. Uh, but diamonds, better, you know? All right. Can you ask an actual question? No. Nah. Okay. Then. Submission makes me happier than any of those things, of course. Any more questions? Oh, come on. Some more. There you go. All right, I'll give you a real question, inshallah. So, mashallah, you gave a lot of really good examples in your speech about, you know, what to do. Uh, and I liked how you ended it, too, with, uh, you know, what really, if you're not happy, then what are you? So um, my question is, like, now in your day-to-day -day when you're going out and you see, like, you know, kids dealing with problems and stuff like that, like, does that make you... Like, what do you think about that? Like, does that make you think more about God and the system? Like, does it, uh, you know, inspire you more? Or what, like, what do you, uh, in your day-to-day, -day, like, when you see, like, the things that's going on in your life, like, what advice would you give to somebody that's, like, around your age and stuff to be happy? Like, how would you talk to them? All right. So you're saying if I were to walk out on the street right now and I saw someone doing bad things, what would be my advice to them to be happy? Well, I mean, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be more real. Okay, let's say you see, like, I, he used the example of, like, Fortnite and stuff, right? Let's say somebody is getting angry at a game or getting angry or, you know, wanting to do something devious or whatever. Like, what would you, what advice would you give them? What would uh, you okay. Say? Yeah. So that's actually something I have a problem with too so <laughs> like That's every honest. once in a while I get mad but you know of course we all have tests I guess I just tell them like my brother Nathan uh, he would always anytime I would get mad over a game he's like bro it's just a game you know? and I agree with him and but I just don't tell him I agree with him uh, <laughs> I don't want him to be right no, okay uh, so I guess I would tell that person you know it's nothing it, it's Fortnite it's nothing why are you getting mad over nothing? Like, if I look into nothing and I'm getting mad at it, I'm getting mad over nothing. It's nothing. Oh. So it's, it's just some dumb thing that you're getting mad over for no reason. So just tell them, like, hey, don't. Thank you. Good. I'll um, play games with you then. Zach and then Mary. Where's Zach? Did you have a question? Uh, same, same question. question. Okay. okay, then Mary. Oh, you. Of course. <laughs> What drives you um, at your age to want to be practicing and uh, being with God? What drives you to want to be, um, so to do all your practices and be with God at your age? So basically you're asking why I'm a sinner. No, 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 no. <laughs> what, 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 what? What drives you? Because we know that most, like, mashallah, submitters, kids have a bigger responsibility, right? And we know the, the parents, by God's grace, teach the children. But what, what, um, what makes you want to be with God most importantly in, in life? All right, I get your question. So I guess, well, it's like Shane Speed, he talked about heaven. And so that's something huge you want really badly, of course, for all of us do. And I guess that kind of drives me towards wanting to be happy in a way. And also, family submitter, you know, it's 
can't get enough. It's just amazing, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, I think Mr. Ghaffari had a question too, and then after that, we'll have um, Nathan come up and share. Uh, Mashallah, in your age, I'm sure as a young teenager, you have a lot of people around you at school and around, and they don't know why you are happy. And you find them unhappy. Do you feel responsibility or do you feel responsible yourself to find out why they are not happy and how they just get rid of their unhappiness with drugs or alcohol or cigarettes? These are temporary bad things that it's not really a solution. Do you ever talk to them or do you feel responsible to do so? And if you do, let us know how. Okay, I'll try. Okay, so you're saying basically that I'm trying to understand your question 100%. If you see a kid doing like drugs or drinking alcohol, do you feel responsible um, telling them not to do that? Like, do you say something to them? Yeah, then? I mean, of course. I mean, <laughs> if I see some guy coming up here drunk, I mean, I'm going to tell him, like, that's yeah, bad, that like, it's wrong. You know, I mean, of course, I mean, do I, do I feel responsible Brian telling him? Too. Yeah, yeah, I would feel responsible because I'm a submitter. That's our job to go give the message. And, and if I see someone doing bad things, of course, I'm going to confront them. Thank you.